Some of my friends have been really excited about building apps with AI even without knowing how to code. But then the question always comes up, how do I actually make this app available to everyone? Well, that's what I'm going to show you today, using Google's Firebase Studio. It'll let you publish your web app to Google Cloud. Alright, here we are in Firebase Studio. You could pick your favorite programming language to start, but we're going to let the AI handle the tech stuff and just type in our prompt. We're going to build an app that searches recipes from MealDB using their public API. It's a free API, and to help the AI out, let's grab an example API request and include it in the prompt. I'll add the API request and tell the AI that this is the format for finding recipes where chicken breast is the main ingredient. And just like that, our prompt is all set, so let's move on. Here are the prototype's features, and it looks pretty good to me. So here's the web page. Let's make a couple of quick tweaks before we test it out. First, we want to add some specific text above the text box. And then, we want it so that when you click on an image on the page, it takes you right to the MealDB page for that recipe. Alright, time for a real test. I just checked my fridge and I've got some mozzarella. Let's see what meals I can cook up with mozzarella. Lasagna sandwiches. Bacon, tomatoes, mozzarella, yeah that's what I'm talking about. Our app's ready to go live, but let me quickly show you a few cool things about Firebase Studio. You can easily edit the code manually. It opens up an editor that looks a lot like Visual Studio Code. So, if you're a programmer, you can make any changes you want, or even if you're not, you can probably change the text on the page. I'm going to shorten this text to, what do you have? Okay, let's refresh the page. And there's the change. Cool, let's go back to the previous view. If you want to see a test version of the page in a full browser window, just click open in new window. All right. Let's get to the main point of the video and publish this web page. First, pick your Firebase project and set up billing. Since I already use Google Cloud, I've got a billing account set up by default. But if you don't, just click the link to create a cloud billing account. This view might look a little more streamlined for me, but if you haven't set up cloud billing yet, you'll need to provide your credit card details. After billing, Firebase sets up the environment. This takes a few seconds and once the environment is ready, click Create Rollout. Now this will take a bit longer. It says here that it might take up to 10 minutes. Let's check out the details. While that's running, we can take a look at how much all of this is going to cost. If you're using your web page for family or a few friends, I'll tell you right now, it'll probably cost you nothing. But let's look at the details anyway. There are currently two pricing plans, Spark and Blaze. Spark is free and Blaze is pay as you go. Since I'm already using Google Cloud, the page has automatically selected the Blaze plan for me, but that works out just fine, and let me show you why that is. Here are the pricing details for all the services, but let's scroll down to the Blaze plan calculator. And in the calculator, let's check out hosting. If we need 10 gigabytes of storage, which is about 5,000 pages of static content, it costs nothing. And remember, we only have one page. If we doubled that storage to 20 gigabytes, it would cost us 26 cents per month. Another thing with hosting a web page is the amount of data transferred. If we needed 10 gigabytes of data transfer, which could be 5,000 users loading your page once, it would cost nothing. Now, if we doubled that to 20 gigabytes of transferred data, it would cost us $1.50 per month. Well, I don't have thousands of users loading my page, so I'm not worried about that. 
Even though the costs seem low, it's still a good idea to keep an eye on what your web page is costing you. This is especially true if you're building something like the next YouTube or a streaming app, or if you're using a lot of AI that puts a heavy load on the CPU. Okay, let's head back and see if our rollout is ready. And there it is. Our web page is published in the US Central Region on Google Cloud Platform. And this is the link you can share with anyone you want to use the web page. Now, if you want your own custom address for the web page, click Manage link, which takes you to the settings page. There, click Add Custom Domain. Type in the domain you own, and then click Continue to set up. This will give you the settings values for your DNS provider. It may cost you a little extra, but it's pretty easy to do. The domain name is reserved in another service, like OpenDNS, for example. And you'll want to keep this page open while you copy and paste these values to the DNS service. So let's go check out the usage statistics. It's important to keep an eye on these, especially when you first publish your app, so you get a good idea of your average traffic. Here are graphs for bandwidth, request counts, CPU and memory utilization. And the last thing I'll show you is how to disable your project, so Google will take down your web page. It takes a little while, so if you try to access your web page, it'll still be online, but it'll disappear soon. That's it for this tutorial. I hope you liked it, and if you did, please share it with your friends. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.